Remember the big dig? Back then, everyone thought it made sense to take automotive traffic from above ground to underground. But a decade after that massive project finished, there's new talk that Boston's transit future could be a little higher up. Adam Riley explains. If you want to travel into the seaport, you can ride in a bus or car and risk getting caught in traffic or brave the elements and walk. But soon, there could be another option. These are 40 passenger gondolas, basically the size wow. of a bus. Innovative and, yeah. and thoughtful. That's Congressman Steve Lynch gushing on Herald Radio about the prospect of gondolas linking the seaport to downtown. Que bella cosa. No, not those gondolas. Think ski lift cars traveling overhead, like on London's Emirates Airline. Ever since Millennium Partners, which built Millennium Tower, proposed building and funding a downtown to seaport gondola loop, the press and public have been fascinated, with some exceptions. This is not Disneyland. Jim Aloisi was Massachusetts Transportation Secretary in the late 2000s. He says the seaport gondola scenario is riddled with problems. Gondolas are great if you have hilly uh, geography, where you're trying to get from an upper place to a lower place and back again. They really don't make sense in places like this in the, in the heart of the city. Also, they're predicting maybe 15,000 people per day being moved by a gondola system. We can move 15,000 people an hour on bus rapid transit. Which means buses built for quick boarding, traveling in dedicated lanes. And Eloise says, well, it's nice that Millennium's offered to kick in 100 million bucks to make seaport gondolas happen. We can't be ceding to the private sector the business of transportation planning and policy. All that said, there is a pro-gondola case, which Jim Stanislavski of the design firm Gensler is happy to make. What we're very excited about is the potential for the stations. You could imagine uh, a ground floor being the Boston Museum. Maybe the middle level is the gondola. Maybe the upper level is the... Uh, Trillium beer garden roof deck. He's talking about a different gondola scenario, a line from north to south station with a spur into the seaport. No one's actually proposed this. Instead, it's an idea a team of Gensler interns explored in a sort of design thought experiment. The artist's renderings are enticing, but Stanislavski says the reality could be even better with tourists and commuters. Seeing the city from a different perspective, enjoying the architecture, you know, seeing things you know, more broadly with, with more vistas. But here, too, Jim Aloisi has a word of caution. If you think about what a gondola system would look like, yeah. it's highly intrusive on the public realm. Yet another reason he's sure bus rapid transit is a much better option. Problem is, speedy buses just don't make the heart beat faster. But gondolas? That's another story. Adam Riley joins me now. Who? Hi, first hey, of all. Hey, Jim. Who else? Anybody else doing this? Uh, and Gondola. Uh, thing. Yes, they are. They uh, there is one in New York City. Goes across the East River. It's oh, been Roosevelt there for a while. Island. Yes, yeah. exactly. There's also one in Portland, Oregon. Both those go, I think, like two thirds of a mile, something like that. Internationally, they're much bigger. In La Paz, Bolivia, I had not known this. There's a nearly 11 mile oh gondola network. Now, they, and internationally, just one more thing. They kind of split the difference between tourist attraction in some places and legit transportation, transportation system. A couple of things that Jim Aloisi said. One, it's highly intrusive on the public realm. That means it just doesn't look good. I think it means it looks okay. really bad, yeah. But much more importantly, when he said the issue, and I agree with it, I think, you know, you don't want to cede transportation in the private sector. Why do you have to cede it? Why can't you take the $100 million from Millennium, mm -hmm. build the gondolas, and then let the Jim Aloises of the world continue to say, which it is, government's responsibility to provide the core of the transportation? My sense is that Aloisi's fear is that the more you allow the private sector to say, okay, well, we're going to uh, suggest this, and then the public sector says, go ahead with that, then it takes the pressure off the public so sector. So replace it rather than complement yeah, it, and potentially. He's very, for example, he's very high on the uh, Boston Landing, new commuter rail yeah, stuff, yeah, that yeah. New Balance built right by. Bias. But that's building into an existing network as opposed to saying, okay, here's how we're going to start. Well, it's like that. Cambridge and Somerville contributing to the Green Line yeah, uh, extension. Right, but, right. Uh, very briefly, uh, uh, Nostradamus, is this going to happen? Uh, it is very hard to say. Right now, the, the big project that Millennium's working on in the eastern seaport, it's under review on the state level. Uh -huh. So I think we'll know more maybe mid-2018. But as long as they're offering to pony up $100 bucks, yeah. I think politicians are going to be interested. So do I. Uh, nice to see you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Great report.